Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. I am here in Berlin at Bayer G for A's signing day, and I've got two members of Team Awesome right here. We've got Sophie and Max. How are you guys? So you're the chief strategist for G for A, and you're the chief technologist for G for A, for those of you who don't know. How's it going? Awesome. I mean, this event is, has been amazing so far. The party's still going on, so. Can yeah, hear you can hear the techno <laughs> music behind us. It is Germany after all, right? Yeah. yeah, no, it really couldn't be better, and I think everyone was here was excited about seeing all these companies, so it was a great stage to present what we had to offer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so speaking of that stage, walk us through the event a little bit. You guys were the MCs, but just for those who didn't get a chance to attend, real quick, what happened here? The, like, winners were announced. Talk to me. So um, through the G3 partnerships, we had 11 companies and startup companies, you know, at various stages, right, uh, from various countries all around the globe. Um, and so they came to actually showcase um, their solutions and their products um, and a little bit about why they were chosen. And we felt that maybe maybe the pitches were already self-explanatory as to why they were chosen because they thought they're all great. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what they won, Max. <laughs> Well, why were they chosen? I think um, it, it goes both ways. One is like the level of maturity that the company comes with, the level of regulation that they comply with to really push the boundaries within digital health. And then the other aspect is more so, you know, how well does it fit with Bayer and the strategies internally? I think that, that you know, we just found the sweet spot there. And now what, it, what happens to these startups? Like they, they are here at signing day and some of them have deals, some of them have like partnership agreement. Like what happens next to them? So they all essentially have some sort of a partnership agreement to some extent. Um, and so when they come here, obviously the earlier stage companies, you know, they they receive mentorship. Um, we do give some sort of an investment. Um, and we actually really try to foster their company and help grow their company. Um, and then also our advanced track companies obviously come in with some sort of a letter of intent or a commercial partnership. And so, I mean, really what happens is they, a lot of them are actually sponsored internally by our different therapy area colleagues and so when they come in I mean day zero begins with let's push out um, whatever project we have yeah. that's exciting yeah I mean and so G4A has been around since 2013 now I mean it started as grants for apps and now it's it's not that anymore we've we've moved down to the acronym because we're cool enough um, so what have you guys learned over like the course of, of iterating each year as as you've gone through calls for applications and then signing days and then implementation what have you guys learned what are the what are the things that are key takeaways from going through this process yeah, well, so already being in a corporate, it's always about aligning, 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 getting everyone on the same page at the same time, bringing these people in who, who need to assess a lot of these companies. I mean, we had over 90 experts look at these companies, and on top of it, we had a jury, a patient jury of over 30 patients who also looked at every single company that's here today. And so it's really about aligning and getting everyone on the same page, um, but not only that, but to drive and making sure that we're serious about it, right? To actually, you know, sign sign a piece of paper that says this is happening. <laughs> Day one, this is happening. <laughs> How exciting though for yeah. the startups. What have you learned, Max? Yeah, I think the key thing is, you know, one thing is driving and pushing the colleagues internally to then actually arrive at something. But you can only do that when you really have a company that is having an innovative product that really stands on its feet and on its own. And this year we had over 720 companies that we had to review. 720? 720 companies. It was a lot to go through. Um, but we had, you know, they were all tremendous ideas. And here the key thing is, you know, we really lifted the bar in the way that we uh, looked at these companies. Did they have a qualified team? Do they have, you know, already international exposure? And, you know, how does their product look like? And what stage is that at? And I think there, uh, there is definitely some wiggle room, but like identifying the right company that goes with it really helps to then push those alignments in, internally as well. So um, as far as this this cohort of startups went, did you guys have any favorites? The, the, the challenge areas were, seemed like they were like they were so diverse. It was like improving affordability of healthcare in Africa. I mean, like they were just really diverse. So maybe even if you didn't have favorites, walk us through some of the challenge areas that you thought were really meaningful that, that um, G4A decided to focus on this year. Yeah, I mean, every single one of our challenge awesome. areas is so meaningful. No, they are. <laughs> but I mean, no, I think what you mentioned, right, because also it was Global Health is a, it's very near and dear to my heart. Um, and I think, you know, 
being able to understand how you can partner with some of these companies and also developing areas is, is really awesome, right? And and to have a commercial company behind it to say, you know, this is important. I mean, it's a huge thing. Um, and also, and we also had a lot of neuro track, uh, neuro, neuro tech companies. So yeah. that was kind of my... That was your thing? Those okay. two were my little, little favorite things. faves, okay. Yeah, I mean, like we work across different therapeutic areas within Bayer, so it's really interesting to go into the depth of like what's possible um, within, for example, ophthalmology, pulmonology. So yeah. really different challenges areas, and I think you know over the past nine months we, we kind of fell in love with all of them, or yeah. we kind of lived and breathed it. Well, yeah. So there's no favorite, right? Like they all have their their advantages and disadvantages. Well, that's cool. And what? I think the the coolest thing really is that you interview him. So you're what? challenging me What's now. What's cool? <laughs> I think I think the greatest thing is when you have a truly digital product um, yeah. that can really change the way that healthcare is provided to you today. And one of those areas is, for example, ophthalmology. You know, you usually go to the eye doctor. It's it, it's all happening within a clinic. Um, and we have some exciting companies that can kind of yeah. turn this on its head and you can do it at home. Yeah. So this is really interesting. I got to interview all of the startups and I have to say the ones I like the most were the ones who were disrupting health insurance. Those were my favorite. The, those yeah. those yeah. were just interesting. And also the, one of the other things that struck me was the diversity of locations. Yeah. Like, I mean, this, this cohort had teams from, I mean, all over Europe, I mean, Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, and then like India. I mean, it was really a diverse group of startups. So I don't know how you whittled it down from seven, what was it? Seven? Seven hundred. 20, yeah. Oh yeah. my God! From that money to these 11, they were they were pretty exciting. So great work, guys. Thank Pass you. that along to the rest of Team Awesome. Thank Thanks you. so much. I'm Jessica Damaso here at Bayer's G4A Signing Day. Thanks so much for joining us.